What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. Before the NBA season, I put out a video um, ranking all the NBA teams in tiers based on predictions I made uh, going into the season. Obviously, I can't account for things like unexpected injuries and major trades that can dynamically swing uh, teams any direction on the spectrum. But generally, knowing players that might have a injury history, I, I do factor things like that into consideration with my predictions. All right. So now that the NBA season is officially over, the rankings or the, the seedings are locked in and we are awaiting the playing tournament. And now I can evaluate and look back on my predictions, evaluate them, and see how close I was to actual reality, all right? So taking a look at it here, the Eastern Conference, number one seed, we have the Milwaukee Bucks, number two, Boston Celtics, number three, Philadelphia 76ers, number four, Cleveland Cavaliers, Number five, New York Knickerbockers. Number six, Brooklyn Nets. Number seven, Miami Heat. Number eight, Hawks. Number nine, Raptors. Number 10, Chicago Bulls. Pacers at 11, Wizards at 12, Magic at 13, Hornets at 14, Pistons at 15. So the seven, eight, nine, and 10 seeds are going to be in the play-in. So Heat, Hawks, Raptors, Bulls, all right? Now moving on into the Western Conference, at the number one seed, we have the Denver Nuggets, number two, Memphis Grizzlies, number three, Sacramento Kings, number eight, Phoenix Suns, number five, Clippers, number six, Warriors, now going into the play-in tournament, seven, Lakers, eight, T-Wolves, nine, Pels, ten, Thunder, and then outside the playoff picture, Mavs, Jazz, Trailblazers, Rockets, and San Antonio Spurs. Now, as far as how my rankings went, I had uh, five tiers, right? Uh, S tier being legitimate championship contenders, A tier, almost contenders, B tier, middle of the pack, C tier, playing teams, D tier, definite lottery teams outside the play-in. Now, one thing I'm looking at it now is that I didn't consider the math, the logical math involved with it, so technically, I would have had to find eight teams to be in the C tier with the playing teams, but I didn't think about that. Um, I just kind of just like, oh, I think this team would be playing. I think this team would be playing. So I actually only ended up putting seven in the playing. I'm not thinking about that. I needed eight, but you know, close enough, not bad. All right. So I'm just going to go down the tier list and see how that compares to their actual seating. All right, Milwaukee Bucks starting with the S tier. Yep, I was right on the money with that. No question there. Now this is this is based off mm, based off the standing. So yeah, S tier championship contenders. Los Angeles Clippers are sitting at the fifth seed right now. Their Paul George is out. So just based off if he doesn't come back and they just have Kawhi and Russell Westbrook, I I cannot put them in as championship contenders. And they're, they have a first-round matchup with the Phoenix Suns. If, if Paul George comes back, yeah, I think they are. But they got the Phoenix Suns first round. Kevin Durant's healthy. I, I don't see them beating the Suns. So at the end of the day, I think I was wrong there with the Clippers uh, pending a Paul George injury. Golden State Warriors currently sitting at the sixth seed. These guys are having a lot of problems winning games on the road. And they're going to face a tough Sacramento Kings team in the first round. I'm not saying that they're going to lose. They could very well win that series. But as of right now, they're without Andrew Wiggins. And there hasn't been a confirmed time on when Andrew Wiggins is going to come back. If Wiggins does not come back, they have no chance of winning a championship. So here's another thing that's... You know, dependent on if they're going to get a player back or not. But as of right now, I personally... Look, anything's possible. I understand that. As of right now, I do not have the Golden State Warriors as championship contenders. They cannot win on the road, and they're missing a big piece. All right. Other team in the S tier, the Boston Celtics. Absolutely championship contenders. I was right on the money there. 
So 50% barring of some players come back. But at the end of the day, I'll take the L on the Clippers and the Warriors. As of right now. Anything can change. All right. A tier, almost contenders. These are teams that I feel like are just, they are right there. They just might be missing a small piece, maybe a one player that can make it. It doesn't have to be an all-star player, but one player that can make a major difference. Maybe just some some fundamental changes on the on the, uh, you know coaching maybe how players are utilized just something small something just missing that can be fixed all right so for the A tier almost contenders I had the Philadelphia 76ers who are currently sitting at the third seed I do think I hit the money on that I don't think Philly has a chance of winning the championship but I think they they're they're close Dallas Mavericks yeah, we all know what happened to the Dallas Mavericks. They um, Kyrie Irving trade, and they completely plummeted, and then they ended up tanking the last game of the season, or last two games of the season, to uh, to get a high draft pick. So, I colossal fuck up right there. Nope, I was wrong on the Mavericks. Denver Nuggets, while they do have the best seed in the Western Conference, and some would say... That would make them championship contenders, and they might be, but I, I'm just not sold on the Denver Nuggets. I think one of these other teams are going to end up beating them, like probably the Phoenix Suns. Um, but, you know, based on their record, you would think they're championship contenders as opposed to the other records in the conference. So, I, I you know what, I, I think I'm still on the money with almost contenders. But I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Uh, but I, I guess I could have put them in S tier. So eh. Memphis Grizzlies, I stand by that. Almost contenders. They're they're listen. Sometimes people say, well, they're young. They're young. They're young. True. But at, at some point, that young team figures it out. Figures it out and breaks through. And they might still be young when they figure it out and break through. So I do understand that. But I don't. Whew, I'm just not sold on the Grizz yet. I'm not. But, you know, they, they, they got the second seed in the Western Conference. So, I mean, they're no slouches and they're capable of beating everybody. But I'll stand with almost contenders. Miami Heat um, are sitting at the seventh seed in the play-in. And I had them as almost contenders. Regardless to Miami seeding, nobody wants to face them in the first round. Nobody. Nobody. So... I think Boston is going to have their hand full in the first round. That could go six or seven games easily. Miami Heat, they have trouble scoring. Their defense is great, but they have trouble scoring the basketball. But at the end of the day, uh, while anything can happen, they can turn it on. they got some really good veterans. They have a great coach there, Coach Spo, and they have great defense. I'll just say I'm wrong there. They they are not almost contenders, but they, they're going to give, they're going to give the, the Celtics some, some trouble. Brooklyn Nets. Well, I didn't predict Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant getting traded. So, yeah, I think when 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 KD was healthy, they were at they 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 were they were at the one or two seed. So, you know, you understand my logic for for putting Brooklyn up for almost contenders and I just think they were missing something like defense. But the firing of Steve Nash and when coach Jock Vaughn got implemented, their defense drastically improved and the team got better. So I think I would have been spot on with the Brooklyn Nets uh, if it wasn't for the trade. But I guess it's now. Middle of the pack teams. I got the Atlanta Hawks. Now I was wrong on that one. Atlanta Hawks are sitting in the eighth seed, sitting in the play-in as a 500 basketball team. And I guess a 500 basketball team would constitute as middle of the pack. But I did not have them in the play-in, so I'll take that L. The Cleveland Cavaliers sitting in at the fourth seed, not almost contenders in my opinion. They, I think they need something, something, something else. Not a small piece, but a a, a game changing piece. Um, so I think I was right on the money with the Cleveland Cavaliers. Minnesota Timberwolves. This is coming uh, on the day or just the day after the Rudy Gobert punch to Cal Anderson, and the Timberwolves are sitting at the eighth seed in the play in. Um, two games over 500, so based on the record, you might be able to call the middle of the plaque. But I did not have them in the play-in, so I would take that L there. I thought that'd be at least six seed, but nah. 
And maybe my math isn't adding up on the amount of teams in each conference that are displayed on the on the um, on the tier list here. Phoenix Suns, the middle of the pack, and I would have been right. Now, actually, based on their their record, number four seed, forty five and thirty seven. Before the Kevin Durant trade, I would have been right on the money. That team was was bait was average without KD. Really, they were. And they they were just hanging around the middle to the bottom for a while. Hanging around that middle area and that playing area for a while. And Kevin Durant comes in and they are now undefeated with KD and he makes a major difference on that squad. So now I would put Phoenix Suns as championship contenders given the trade, but didn't know that would happen. Uh, the disappointing uh, Charlotte Hornets. I had high hopes for the Hornets. Thought they'd be a middle of the pack team. Um, expected Lamella Ball to take the next big step, but Lamella Ball started the season injured. They got off to a really bad start without Lamelo. The Mal Bridges stuff, like Mal Bridges, was a big part of that team, and he ended up not coming back to the team. So, and even when Melo came back, they were they had suffered so many losses, and then after that, he was in and out of the uh, of the team with with more injuries. So, unfortunately for the, the Charlotte Hornets, they are a definite lotto team and not middle of the pack. All right, Chicago Bulls. The Chicago Bulls are a playing team and not middle of the pack. I thought they would be a lot better than what they were this year. There was some rift, supposedly, between Damar and and um, Zach, and even some rift between Zach and the coaching staff, I think. But I think they might be past that now. But either way, I was wrong with the Chicago Bulls. They ended up being a playing team. All right, going into the C tier, we got the Toronto Raptors that I had placed. Um, definitely, I was right on the money there. I remember there was a guy in the comment section of that video. He was like, Toronto Raptors, playing team? Are you nuts? I was like, nope, they're playing team. <laughs> but, uh, yep, right on the money with the Raptors. Sitting in at the uh, ninth seed. San Antonio Spurs, I thought they would at least make the play in. But, no, they have had an abysmal season. But they have some nice young pieces, nice young pieces there. Um, with Sohan and everything, but they 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 clocked in at the very bottom, 15th seed. And I really hope the Spurs do not draft Victor Wim. I hope they don't get Victor Wimbanyama. I, I do not want to see Wimbanyama with the Spurs. I don't. Utah Jazz, I had them as a playing team, and the Jazz ended up missing the playoffs and are a lotto team indeed. They got off to a really good start, and they just slowly started going down in the standings. So I was wrong on that one. Portland Trail Blazers, I had a as a uh, playing team, and obviously I was wrong. <laughs> they were a definite lotto team. Damian Lillard couldn't shoulder as much as the load as he thought he could. Uh, and the, my thing about Dame is that you know he, he can score in bunches and get hot and shoot from three, but Damian's not the best playmaker either. And Damian Lillard cannot be your best player on a championship team. I'm sorry. I had the Knicks as a play-in. And boy, was I was wrong. So shout out to New York. The Knicks came back from a disappointing season and had a pretty good season. Sitting at the fifth seed, man, with 47 wins. So shout out to the Knicks um, for their, um, for their uh, successful season as far as getting into the playoffs. So good on them. The New Orleans Pelicans I had as a playing team, even considering um, Zion Williamson's injury history. And I was right. They made it right into the play-in because of Zion Williams' injury history. And before Zion got injured, they were at the top of the standings and a serious threat. But I was right on the money factoring that one in. So good on you, boo. Los Angeles Lakers I had as a playing team. Los Angeles Lakers, my favorite team. And I'm not one of those delusional Laker fans that scream championship after every move they make, yada, yada, yada. I keep it real with my team. And I said they'd be a playing team, and I gave my reasons, and I was absolutely right for those reasons. Even with the Russell Westbrook trade. Absolutely right. They still could not get themselves out of that playing tournament. Um, 
zone. So here they are. The Los Angeles Lakers sitting at the seventh seed. And all they got to do is win one game to mark their stamp in the playoffs. Definite lotto teams. I had the Washington Wizards. And I was right on the money. They're sitting at the 12th seed. I also had the Detroit Pistons right on the money, 15th seed. I had the Indiana Pacers right on the money, 11th seed. I had the Sacramento Kings as a lotto team. And boy, this is one of the most egregious picks I have had. The Sacramento Kings are the third seed in the Western Conference. They are lively, like the beam, baby, like the beam, the beam team, and are young. They're enthusiastic they're energized they know how to play basketball and and that boy um i can't believe i'm forgetting his name god damn the point guard what's his name can't believe i can't believe i'm forgetting this kid's name come on man come on boo you're ridiculous point guard kings darren fox damn it golly yeah darren fox is one of the most clutch players in the league this season, if not the most clutch player this season. And the dude's balling out of his mind along with Sabonis and them boys. So good on them. Good on them. Um, the Houston Rockets I had as a guaranteed lotto team right on the money right there, 14th. The Oklahoma City Thunder I had as a lotto team, but they made it. They just made the play-in tournament at the 10th seed. And uh, Shea is rounding out to be quite the exceptional player. And they got a young, bright future ahead of them. Orlando Magic I had as a playing team, or as a lotto team, and I was right on the money there. Uh, but they have a bright future, too. They got a lot of young studs there. In fact, they got too much talent on that Magic team. They don't know what to do with it. So they're going to have to move some of these young players and bring in some veterans to take the next step, in my opinion. Shout out to my boy, Bobo. Bo. And there you go. Uh, for that D for that D tier, I was right on the money. That was pro probably my best my best uh, my best tier prediction overall. But yeah, I think I did I think I did an okay job considering some things I couldn't account for, like the major trades that made some differences, and there were definitely some teams I just missed the mark on here. Absolutely missed the mark on. But overall, I think I did an okay job for a preseason prediction for all the teams and where they would end up. But yeah, let me know what you think about it. I would love to hear your opinion. And uh, I had a lot of fun ranking these and had fun seeing how everything ended up panning out uh, against my prediction. So it, it was cool. Can't wait to do this again next season. All right. Let me know what you think about it. Like, comment, subscribe. Can't talk. Like. Comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified. Catch you on the next one. We out, baby.